Hello, you're watching GB Times for a third angle on your current affairs. It's day nine of the Lianghui here in Beijing, and it's an important day for the CPPCC, China's top advisory body. This is a transition year, and a new leadership is being appointed. That includes a new chairman. Everyone had been expecting Yu Zhongcheng to be appointed. So let's go behind that curtain to find out more. As the Lianghui advanced more than half on March 11th, the new leadership structure of the Chinese government also starts to take more shape. Today, the Great Hall of the People unfolded a whole day long agenda of voting for China's top advisory body, the CPPCC. After the third meeting of the burial in the morning, in which a list of nominees was examined, members of the CPPCC and domestic and foreign media witnessed the election of the new chairman, vice chairman, secretary general, and standing committee members of the 12th CPPCC. As widely expected, the number four member of the party, Yu Zhengsheng, became the chairman of the 12th CPPCC after having been featured as one of the executive chairmen of the burial earlier. Until recently, Yu Zhengsheng was the party secretary of China's financial and banking capital, Shanghai. As a close family friend of China's former leader, Deng Xiaoping, their friendship came in useful when his brother defected to the United States in 1985. This scandal hindered his ascension within the party but didn't end his career. An engineer in ballistic missile technologies, he managed to control the fallout. Hu Jintao's protégé, current minister of the CPC United Front Work Department, Ling Jihua, also stepped up to be one of the vice chairmen of the CPPCC after having missed the Politburo Standing Committee in the last 18 party congress. So no surprises there. To discuss the role of the CPPCC and how it could evolve over the next five to ten years, I sat down for an exclusive interview with Lu Xinghua, the spokesperson for the CPPCC. So Mr. Lu Xinghua, thank you very much for your time. Um, I understand the CPPCC is an advisory body, the country's top advisory body, but can you explain a little bit how it fulfills its role and what could be its greatest asset? Be 跟西方的国家是一致的吗全国政协委员我们也有一些部委啊也需要听取这些了这个八个民族党派
呃常务委员会作为这些常务委员会的呃这些领导人。Now, I understand there are actually eight of these uh, so-called democratic parties within the CPPCC. Can you explain uh, the role they play within the political process and also whether any of their members will be involved in the upcoming government? These political parties, or these parties, are actually divided into the whole country. They have a part of the political parties in Beijing, and they have a part of the political parties. 在北京，但是很多人都是分布在各个省市的。呃，我们也注意发挥他们的作用，并把他们呢加入到我们国际政府当中。呃，比如说现在啊，这些政协委员，就是说这些民主党派人士啊，在全国的，他们有我这儿有这样一个数字啊，在担任县以上这个职务的了，党外干部有三万三千人。在最高检察院、最高人民法院这个领导班子，这就是意思说是副部级的以上的，呃，党外干部呢也有二十人。我们的卫生部长和科技部长，他们两位呢，也是从民主党派来的人士。Now the CPPCC comprises people from all walks of life. There is also federations, unions,、uh, entrepreneurs, academics. There are also celebrities more and more. I think、um, we've seen Jackie Chan, Lu Xiang,、uh, Yao Ming. Now, apart from their fame, what do they bring to the work of the CPPCC? Hmm. You this question, ah, put it very well. Uh, because in every year, the, ah, this, ah, Chinese Chamber of Commerce, ah, our foreign reporters also ask the same question. Because 呃，这一届，比如说这一届来说，啊，姚明他个人有两米啊，一多啊，他也参加了。因为姚明不仅在中国有名，世界也很有名。人家会问，这样的体育、啊，这个我们称为体育著名的体育人士，他给他把他选为协商委，这个政协委员。他到底他的了这个对社会的社会温度的关注度怎么样？他有没有传承议政的能力？那么第二个问题呢，是关心他，如果他作为一个很著名的运动员，有没有时间来对政协的这些事情？第一个要参加大大会，第二个呢，有没有传承议政的这样一个时间？好，类似这样的问题。首先，我要指出的呢，这些啊是体育界一方面的著名人士，他们对体育界，比如是如果从文艺界来的话，他们对文艺界本身，他们从事的事业呢非常了解，所以这提供了他们对这方面他们从事的各行各业的这个这个了解，更好的有利于他们传承一政。他们提出的提案、啊。往往非常有针对性，而且不只是他个人的提案，他而且来开会以前呢，收集了别人的这个意见，所以他们的提案这个质量啊非常高。但是可能你还不知道那个，我们这个政协委员啊提的提案，他不只是在开会期间，而且他通过网络啊，一个年在一个三百六十五天，他都可以提，所以这样子呢。如果他某一个会议不参加的话，也不影响他传承议政。Now this is the first session of the 12th CPPCC. You have a five-year、uh, tenure in front of you. How do you see the role of the CPPCC evolve? 你可以注意到一下，就是我们人员方面的变化。我们从建国初期一直到我们，比如说这个三世纪的末。我们这些呢，参加政协的呢，大部分都是一些，呃，在经济建设呢工作过的一些老同志。那么现在可不一样，他们是各行各业的都市的优秀人才，他们的这个本人素质呢也非常高，很多人啊都有极强的传承议政的能力，他们很希望在我们国家的政治生活当中发挥他们的作用。所以我说，他们的本人的素质都非常高。
比如说我这个这个对外友好小组四十几个人，我想每一个人都是大学毕业的，这个学历是大学毕业的，而且他们基本上百分之九十都当过部长，所以他们工作了的第一些工作有丰富的经验，嗯，所以我觉得呃，证实了在我们今后啊，呃，我刚才讲的各个方面将起到很大的作用。That was part one of our exclusive interview with Lu Xinhua, the spokesperson for the CPPCC. That's it for us today here in the Great Hall of the People. I'll be back tomorrow for day 10 of the Liang Hui. For more information on China and the role it plays today, visit gbtimes.com every day throughout the day for all the latest news. You can also find us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm David Keaton for The Third Angle.